Welcome to Behind the Scenes at Slow Wine Fair 2023 in Bologna. Stevie and the podcast crew interview a variety of Italian exhibitors who attended the fair and took the opportunity to chat with many of the benchmark producers selected for our new book, Italian Wine Unplugged 2.0. Check out the big buffet of guests and get ready to be hungry and thirsty as exhibitors and producers talk about their signature products and give us top tips for food, wine, and fun in their regions. Hello, my name is Stevie Kim, and we are here on the On the Road edition of Bologna Slow Wine Fair. I have next to me one of the, you know, very, very strong women, which represent Italian wine promotion, um, part of our unwavering support, supportive partner uh, for, of course, Vinitil International Academy and everything that has to do with Italian wine promotion. Her name is Brunella Saccone. Ciao Brunella. Ciao, nice to meet you. Everybody. So I saw her here and this is our audience. So what is your official title? Oh, I'm the head of the wine and food promotion all around the world in the Italian Trade Commission, which is the agency from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to boost and strong the promotion of Made in Italy all around the world. The only thing that I'm interested in, in what you said, is of course, food is also wine. Is that correct? Yeah. So, you know, I've been working with Brunella for, I don't know, for many, many years, maybe 10 10 years. 10 years, yeah. yeah. 10 years. I've known her since she was little. You know, she was very small and young. Not that she's very big right now. But so Brunella, I would like for you to tell our audience what have been like the challenges during the pandemic in terms of wine promotion in general. So during the pandemic, people drank a lot. People were drunk, were drunk every day, every time and every moment because of the depression. But after the pandemic, there is a new way of consuming wine. So people are more attentive about wine, about the production, about quality. They want to drink, but they, they want to drink safe, in a safe way. Okay. So great. the challenge is to educate people, drink quality, eat quality, and mix them. Okay. So, Brunella, you spoke at the inauguration of the Slow Wine uh, this morning about the new plans, kind of the new perspectives in terms of the focus of promotion of Italian wine, because there are objectively difficulties in Russia, which is a very important market for Italian wine. I think perhaps China is opening up, but that's just a recent. So what is what will your focus be? Will it be more in Europe or or elsewhere? So we have different uh, strategy to develop um, wine promotion. The first of them is to strong the major markets. I mean, uh, United States, which is the, the, the main consumer of Italian wines, to work on the organic uh, in markets sensitive to this subject. So I mean, the north of Europe, uh, Germany, uh, China, and uh, try to enter new market like the Arabic ones, the Muslim ones, with the new trend of wine, which is the, the alcoholated wine. Combine our activity of promotion with uh, trade fairs abroad. So um, let the Italian company to expose uh, in the trade fair abroad, to invite buyers in Italy, like in the Slow Wine Fair in, in Italy, and uh, Vitigno Italia, and all the, manif- all the trade fair in Italy. Okay. Um, so, how important is your role in, in terms of each it to bring the buyers to Italy and then also do the promotion abroad? Which is more important? Do things abroad or do things in Italy? It's important to strong the Italian trade fair as a partner of the Italian system, uh, but it's also it, it's also important to bring uh, buyers from abroad. Uh, both are important for us. I, I do agree. Both the incoming and also um, outbound is just as important. In fact, um, ICHA has been an important, if not the most important partner for the promotion of Italian wine for whatever we're doing. And 
just on behalf of uh, not just myself, but also Vinitaly, I would like to thank our partner because for Vinitaly, which is coming now, we're working on, of course, the, the buyer's program, and it's quite significant, I might add, hundreds and hundreds of buyers, but also you support the Vinitaly International Academy, the students, as well as the five-star wines, all the judges and the, and the competition. So that's it, our next appointment, probably we'll see you also at Vinitaly. Signing off here from Slow Wine in Bologna. Ciao ragazzi. Bye bye, thank you. Hi, good morning, I'm at Slow Wine in Bologna and today I have with me Henri David, the co-owner of Fattoria Zerbina. And today we're gonna to talk about his Albano wine because Fattoria Zerbina was chosen as a benchmark producer for Albana in our new book, Italian Wine Unplugged 2.0. So, good morning, Henri. Good morning. Henri. Grazie good morning. per venire. Thank you. Let's talk a minute about Albana. So, a lot of our listeners know that Albana was the first white DOCG in Italy, but not many people know a lot about Albana. So, give me a little history of the work that Fattoria Zerbina is doing with Albana. Albana is absolutely one of the, I think, most interesting variety of Romagna. It's an historical variety. If you think about the Albana, you think about, uh, immediately you think about the, the history of uh, Romanian Empire, the last period of a Romanian Empire. Part of what we're doing with the book is trying to include history, myths, legends, yeah. the travel of ancient civilizations and how these grapes got here. So for Albana, really important. Yeah. The Albana has uh, two main characteristics. Uh, the first characteristic is the um, uh, unbelievable capacity to concentrate a lot of polyphenolic components into the skins. And uh, the second characteristic is the acidity. I remember when I was studying Albana, someone <laughs> described it as a red wine in a white dress. Absolutely. <laughs> Fatira Zerbina in 2008 decided to work with the second aspect of the Albana, the acidity. Because mm -hmm. fortunately, the Albana has a good acidity. So we started the experiment uh, in terms of uh, period of selection. Of selection. So uh, after 13, 14 years, we know exactly now what we have to do to produce something uh, I mean, very drinkable, and that the people are discovering. It's accessible. It's not Absolutely. so complicated. Absolutely. Your co-owner, Christina, yeah. who was interested in the Sauterne-style yeah. wines with Botrytis from Bordeaux, she's now doing a project with Albana. Tell yeah. me about that. <laughs> exactly, because the, the, the modern approach of the Albana for the dry version probably is the last step, but uh, the beginning was about the sweet version of Albana because the Albana is uh, very famous for the, for the sweet wine. Of course, the Roman emperor's wives were drinking that, the Absolutely, ancient story yes. says. Absolutely, yes. yes. But um, Christina, uh, my, my partner, uh, she studied uh, enology in Bordeaux and she felt in love uh, about the, the, the sweet wine, the Sautern, of course, and she tried uh, to, to work uh, with this variety, with the Albana, with the same concept of, of Sautern. Why? Because the Albana has the potentiality to, to follow the way of the Sautern. So how many wines are you making with Albana? We produce uh, uh, a dry version, a semi-dry version, and uh, three different steps of, um, of sweet wine made with the Botrytis. In 1989, uh, uh, we produced the first version of uh, Scacomato, the name of yes. uh, the first bottle was Scacomato, is Scacomato, but it was, I mean, 30% botrytized and 70% dry. Dried, a passiment. In 1996, finally, was the first uh, vintage of 100% botrytized Alpine. And this is very curious because we are, I mean, the area is, uh, is uh, new for the, for the Sangiovese mainly. Exactly. And uh, if you think that a sweet wine could be a flagship, an ambassador of, of, the, of the winery in Romagna, is not, I mean... And this is where we're aiming to go with these grapes that are lesser known, historic, important, um, and become, take them out into the world and make them be more ambassadors. So 
I'm going to ask you a question, yeah. put you on the spot. When you're drinking Albana, what, which one is your favorite, the dry or the sweet? I like absolutely the dry version. Mm -hmm. I like the verticality, the minerality, but at the same time, uh, it's Albana, so the DNA uh, you can find on, a, on the mouth, so it's very, the potential the texture. Is, the texture is very What are you intensive. eating with it? It's very polyhedric uh, mm -hmm. because uh, with this acidity, you can put a lot of different uh, type of food, pasta with the vegetable sauce, for example, white meat, of course, uh, or cheeses, uh, and also fish, absolutely. Thank you so much right. for giving us a masterclass on Albana today. No, it's not today. a masterclass. But no, it was great. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, welcome to the Italian Wine Podcast. Today we are at the Slow Wine, Slow Food Fair in Bologna, and I am here with a producer, Cantina Benedetti. Portantica. Yeah. Okay, and this is Simone, the owner, and this is his niece, Greta. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about where where you are located, mm -hmm. the, the area. Okay. We are located in uh, Sant'Ambrogio in Valpolicella, a classic zone of Valpolicella in uh, Verona, in the north uh, east of Italy. Okay, and can you give me a little bit of a history about your winery, a little bit of a story about where you guys started? My grandparents uh, were uh, from uh, the zone of uh, uh, mountains near our home. Okay. They uh, decided to leave the mountains to find a better opportunity. Yes. They bought uh, some uh, vineyard. What is your signature grape? Our uh, typical uh, types of grapes is uh, Corvina because it uh, gives uh, to the wine a lot of longevity. It's also more elegant. elegant. Like. And so what is your signature wine that you make, the, the most important? Il nostro vino più importante, più significativo è la Marone Croce del Gall. Okay. And do you export to outside of Italy? Noi esportiamo eh, negli Stati Uniti, yeah. esportiamo in Danimarca, Svezia, eh, Norvegia, Germania, Svizzera, Francia, qual qualcosina, eh, Cina, mm -hmm. eh, Taiwan. Wow, okay. And I guess the last question I wanted to ask is if you were eating with friends and you had to choose your wine, what would you, what's the abbinamento? In Valpulicella abbiamo principalmente tre varietà di uve, ci sono le, 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 le uve storiche della Valpulicella che ci sono solo lì e nel Bardolino e basta, nel resto del mondo non ci sono. Mm -hmm. E con queste tre varietà qua riusciamo a fare un vino leggero come il Valpulicella, fino a dei vini strutturati come la Marone e un vino dolce come il Recciotto. È un vino leggero con degli antipasti, mm -hmm. con i salumi o dei formaggi leggeri abbinati a un Valpulicella. Poi si può, si può passare con Valpulicella superiore o ripasso con dei primi piatti comunque gustosi, può essere una, una pasta con ragù, mm -hmm. eh, un ragù di coniglio o di, o di, o di vacca indifferente, mm -hmm. ok? E fino a passare al secondo piatto che può essere un arrosto o anche semplicemente una, una costata, una bistecca con un bel amarone. Ok, e so qual è il tuo favorito? Il mio favorito è l'amarone, è un vino comunque da produrre difficile. Ok. Per me è una conquista, è una conquista anche farlo assaggiare perché ha un grandissimo potenziale al naso da poter sentire tantissimi profumi e tanta soddisfazione in bocca. Ok, perfetto. Ok, grazie per tutto, hai fatto bene. Grazie Simone. Bye bye. Bye guys. Hello, my name is Stevie Kim. We're back. We're still in Slow Wine and we are looking for all the benchmark producers of Italian Wine Unplugged 2.0 at Slow Wine. And here with us today, this is his debut, so we have to be really kind to him. What is your name, sir? Hello, I'm Costante Planeta. I'm 24 years old. I'm the third generation of Planeta wineries. Uh, I'm a young winemaker and commercial wine. Okay, so what is the name of your father? I'm all like your dad. I could be your mom. I'm Alessio's son. So I'm like friends of Alessio, as you know. And here, Planeta is the benchmark producer for Calabrese Nero Davola. And he's also the um, benchmark producers for Frappato. These are the two uh, benchmark producers. I want to talk to him about, a little bit about the younger generation, okay? So you're 24, have you got a sibling? Have you got a 
brother or sister? Yes, we, have, we are two, son of Alessio, Vito, the older, and me, the younger. But we are a, a big family, 40 cousins. My grandfather has eight brothers and sister, so we are a big family. Mm -hmm. And I start with the winery in September. You just, just started now. now. What did you study? Digital marketing. And then we are the South Italy market. So I'm, I'm the area manager for Planeta Winery uh, for Sicily, Puglia, Calabria and Basilicata and Molise. What is your perspective about the younger generation with wine? Because in my opinion, what I see is that the younger generation, they are not very um, let's say fond of wine in general. The young generation uh, has the mission to put the wine in the young table. So the, the, so the future the is future. The, the next yeah, generation yeah, of the, the winemakers. Future. How can we get the younger generation to drink more wine, be more interested in wine? What can we do? And uh, maybe to start to travel, maybe with some girlfriend, to find and discover the winery and the small winery all around Italy. Start from Italy and then mm -hmm. go outside. Where do you live? I'm from Palermo. So listen, tell us um, to our audience, going to Palermo for the first time, the younger generation, what is kind of the favorite bar that they can go to? And favorite food place, just one and one. One and one. For food, Ferramenta in the historical center of Palermo, one of the biggest of Europe. And for bar, I think it's Mazzini Trenta, and one of the best mixology and wine lists in Palermo. So that's my choice. Okay, great. That's it for now. Signing off. Alessio will be very proud of you. You did your is this your first interview? Yes. <laughs> you see? <it>? Congratulations. <laughs> you have survived your first interview. That's it for now. Signing off. Ciao ragazzi. Thank you. Hi there, I'm here with Pier Viberti and can you tell me the name of your winery? Marengo Mauro Winery, yes. Right, okay, and uh, what, do you, what do you do at, what's your role at Marengo Mauro? So yeah, uh, Marengo Mauro is na the name of my father-in-law. Marengo Mauro is a small family business winery. Where so is it? It's in Novello. We are in the southwest area of the 11 villages of Barolo. It's a family, a family run business with brand new lines of wines and labels, but the whole estate was founded in 1901. And then uh, during the 60s started the cultivation of vineyards. There are two most important wines. Uh, one is uh, of course Barolo, Barolos are becoming more and more characteristic and producers are trying to represent the best uh, Barolo in their region, in their village and in their vineyard. Right. Uh, so I think Barolo Ravera is the uh, crew we have, which is the most important one. Uh, we do it uh, since 2017. But uh, in the last uh, five years, we produced uh, also uh, Nascetta, is that your signature grape? Yeah, I think I think yes, because Nascetta it's only in Novello, so in the, our small village, like less than 1,000 inhabitants in the same soil where Nebbiolo grows. And how many bottles do you produce a year? At the moment, we are producing 20,000 bottles per year. We export some wines. I think at the moment we, we sell most of the wines in Italy, still in Italy, but uh, we're starting to export uh, US, UK, north of Europe. So I was going to ask you about the slow wine motto. What It's very much to do with sustainability and um, what, what do you think your winery, how does it fit in for the buono pulito giusto motto? Uh, I think it's a, a, a very complex matter and I think it's the most important uh, theme we have to reflect on. This is the first time in the last century that a great area as Barolo is, it's uh, having new challenges, not only producing quality wines, but also produce uh, su sustainable wines. It means that we have to reach the ability to keep uh, uh, the focus on the agriculture, which is the most important part of producing wines. Two years ago, we started a new project which is called La Risorceria. That's a kind of a small shop. We make the wine tasting, but we also 
show some materials coming from the vineyards, like clay, like pigments obtained with the, the grapes, like we uh, transform a lot of things coming from the agricultural process mm -hmm. in new objects. Mm -hmm. okay. We put together a lot of things. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to speak to much. me. And that is a wrap. We are with Pier Viberti from Marengo Mauro. And uh, see you guys later. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.